So at this point, don't pick my nose anymore? If you don't, yeah, if you could not pick your nose, okay. just to be clear. All right, yeah. I'll, I'll try to avoid that. Yeah. I'm Izzy Swan, I live in Charleston, South Carolina, and I build stuff. So I started out, uh, I started out more or less in a furniture shop, cabinet shop, um, young, very young. Uh, I, I quickly learned I had a knack for carving, so I spent most of my time carving finials and claw feet and doing a lot of box or dovetail drawers and that sort of thing, which, you know, is to this day why I don't do dovetail drawers. <laughs> I was looking for a way out of what I was doing. Um, I went to college for construction management. I ended up building long homes for a while. Uh, and I was looking for a way out. I was looking for uh, this, how can I stay at home, not be traveling around? How can I still earn, earn an income and take care of my family using skill sets that I already possess? And I don't want to build furni fine furniture. I, I, I love fine furniture as, as, a, as a medium and, and like looking at it. I don't have the need for a bunch of fancy furniture in my house. It never, never, it's never been a desire for me. Well, I got into rustic furniture a little after it became mainstream, really. Um, back in the 1970s, there was a whole huge back to the earth movement. And you're probably a little bit young to remember all that, but um, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with that because it's not just hairs of board and that's your apron, you know? It's like, here's a board. Now you can put veneer and inlays and sculpture. You can sculpt and, and you can add all these little pieces for this mosaic pattern. So you can create pretty much anything your crazy little mind can think of. Uh, and that's why rustic furniture, because I wasn't limited to, you know, make this dado, make this, you know, mortise and tenon. Here's this flat board, no sap wood, no knots, you know, get rid of all that stuff because I love that stuff. This was my first attempt at building a machine or a pocket hole machine. Got to watch what I'm saying um, for making rapid, rapid uh, pocket holes along large sections of material. Uh, there's another prototype of that. Um, this one right here is one of my favorite. This is the portable drill powered disc sander. That goes up there. You put that to drill here. There's your base. You got a disc sander. I've, I have since um, scavenged some parts off of it. Why are you so um, drawn to drill power? That that happened on accident. <laughs> so uh, I was making some videos and and I was thinking about you know places where you can't get motors. I started thinking about what what does people have access to and it was drills i mean pretty much anywhere in the world you go you can find a drill if it's a corded drill an old beat up drill whatever you can find one and it makes a really good motor and it's super easy to attach to a shaft so that's why drills before youtube i had a furniture company built rustic furniture uh, i was fortunate enough to have made good relationships in the industry so i was able to sell my company sell my designs and at that point as long as i stayed humble and my wife had an income i really didn't have to do much i'm here to tell you fishing can get boring after two years even though there are like millions of species of fish down here right uh, i just i had to do something so i reached out um to youtube and i started making videos on youtube thinking i could meet some folks that way and uh, it was just a happy set of circumstances that has led to a a channel with 320,000 subscribers. So, you know, here I am. Now uh, I'm trying to make a business out of it. You strike me as a shoot from the hip kind of guy. That's, that's the point. Um, and I'm giving away some secrets here. So, you know, this is exclusive stuff. Uh, I, what you see on, on my channel is, is high energy, fun. Um, I, I just love what I do and I really do. That's not, a, that's, that's not an act. Uh, and, but it seems very, all over the place but there's a method to my madness there really is and you know and I, i'm not going to go into depth on that but there is a plan you know if anybody's watched my channel they see i do some crazy stuff um so and, and that kind of stuff comes from my family my my young kids more more than anything i want to inspire them to to build stuff and i'm not going to get them excited about chairs and cabinets it's just not going to happen now, I do do some, you know, jigs and fixtures and, and a, a few furniture builds, and that's more for the audience who's watching, trying to educate and teach and entertain all at the same time. My favorite invention is a jig I built that makes wooden bowls on a table saw, both inside and out, and you can do some really wild stuff with it, including making, you know, patterned, uh, patterned cuts on the outside of it and that sort of thing. But 
that's one of those things where you really got to know what you're doing or you know bad things can happen so when i first started this i, I felt like i had that same that attitude coming from a tradesman that hey your safety is your responsibility and, and that's the way I came into YouTube, you know, and, and I still think that's true. I think we're all responsible for our own safety. And I put some videos out of like the bowl making jig of turning or turning dowels on the table saw and that sort of thing. And, and you know, I put them out with the understanding, with the thought that everybody has some common sense. You know, everybody, as far as I'm concerned, the whole world has common sense. Well, I was wrong. Um, a few, oh, a couple years ago, and right about the time you stopped seeing me put those kind of jigs and, and fixtures on YouTube, someone sent me an image of a, a picture of a jig they built, and they were very proud of it. And it freaked me out. I'm like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. He thinks he does. He has no clue. Um, so I stopped. I, I stopped throwing out those really wild and crazy builds because I didn't want to. I, I didn't want people who are out there who are confident in what they're doing but don't really know what they're doing to be doing that sort of stuff. Do you enjoy the video making process? No, I hate videos. <laughs> I hate computer work, I hate making videos, I hate the, the camcorder, I, I just don't like them at all, but that's part of the process. And I love the sharing, so I mean, to get from A to, you know, A to C, I have to do B, and it's just part of the game, you know? And I, anybody who's been working their, their, their whole lives, no matter what they're doing, there's some part of it, even if they love what they do, there's some part of it that just they don't like. I don't have a lot of interest in TV. Um, I would if TV was more supportive of what we're doing here. I think in order for TV to really survive and do well, there has to eventually be some kind of marriage between the self-publishing online content and, and what they're doing. There really has to be a a give and take relationship for, for them to do well. Everybody knows this type of content, the online media is just exploding and, and TV's not doing well. So there's just no point in it. Um, aside from my kids going, oh, dad's on TV, you know. <laughs> Nothing happens without the process of thinking, without the process of creation, and that happens in the brain. Um, I, I've been building and designing things in my head for far too long for plans to be really effective for me. The only time they really come in handy is if I'm building something that's mul very complex, multiple movements, um, possible intersections where things could bump into each other, that kind of stuff. And even then I don't build, I don't make plans unless I have to, because I, that's just more time I have to spend on the computer. As far as you know, skill sets, like bringing, like you go to a CNC and you carve out this beautiful, uh, you know, angelic figure, uh, is it the same as a craftsman who's got some chisels in his hand, you know, in a well-lit room with soft music playing in the background? Yeah, no, it's not the same thing. You know, there's there's years of experience behind that. Is it is it so vastly different that you know the end result is no? The re end result is 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 similar. So I think the technology is a great thing. I've seen, used CNCs before. I like I like them. There's, it's like having a second set of hands in the shop that don't make mistakes once you once you plan them out. You know. Uh, there is a fine line because a lot of times uh, I would I build something that I really wouldn't do just because I, it's, I'm making a video to show people how to do it and that's a, that's a hard that's a really difficult place there because there are people who can afford just to buy whatever they want and there are people who can barely afford to you know buy a, a drill bit um, so content wise I build a lot of things that show people how to accomplish a task that maybe a tool would accomplish that being said if it was just me and I was building a piece of furniture, I'd just go buy the damn thing. So, um, you know, so video wise, I, I sometimes do things that are just because, just because I want to show people that, hey, you don't have to have $500 to go buy this tool. You can do something this way. It may not perform as well. It may perform better. You never know with homemade stuff. Uh, but there's that opportunity there. If it were just about me, you'd see a big, huge CNC sitting over there. You'd see a metal CNC sitting over there. Um, but what I do is not necessarily just for me, it's for my audience, so I typically try to keep humble about what I have in the shop. Uh, recently I was doing three videos a week, I was calling them Money Saving Mondays, Tool Talk Wednesdays, and Freestyle Fridays. And I've changed that format again because I didn't care for it. And that's one of the things I think the people who have been watching me for a long time are just used to. They know that Izzy's going to change his format, He's, I'm going to keep trying it until I find something that works good for me. Um, so recently it's been money saving Mondays, you know, how to build clamps, how to, you know, build uh, disc sanders, how to build drum sanders, that kind of stuff. So I'll continue to do that because there's so many people out there who want to make who just cannot afford 
to have a fi you know five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars in equipment and this is not a cheap hobby no matter which way you slice it now you know we can go out and just use us you can you have a hammer and a skill saw or a hammer and a hand saw and make some cool stuff to do all of the things that people want to do it takes more than just a hammer and a handsaw so that's kind of why the 50 dollars wood shop or the money saving mondays or the how to build this jig out of you know a piece of duct tape and a two by four so that, that's why i do that